Welcome to uh, SageWorks webinar. Uh, today's webinar is Be a Profit Center. Um, it's kind of a how-to guide of how to add value to your compliance engagements. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. I know we started a few minutes late here, but we really wanted to uh, wait and let some people kind of trickle in. Um, I'm sure some of you uh, might have questions about how to get the slides today from uh, this presentation. Um, and a way that you can do that is uh, just be looking out for an email from us that will be going out later today. Um, we, we will send you a slide and, uh, and kind of as an added bonus to that, we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar as well. Um, but I really wanted to thank you for joining us today. Um, this is an important topic to us um, because we think it is very valuable to help accountants differentiate their firms. Um, and that's really at the heart of what SageWorks does and, and kind of the, the heart around uh, profit sense. Um, and so before we kind of get into that and before I introduce today's speaker, I really wanted to um, go through a few housekeeping items. Um, first, uh, one thing that you should know is that uh, your, your line is muted to the webinar, so you don't have to worry about any background noise about uh, people coming in and out of your office or um, anything like that. You're muted, and so all you can do is, is really hear um, myself and the presenter. Um, and uh, so with that, know that uh, we can't hear you if you have a thought or a question. Um, so we really want to encourage you to look on your side uh, navigation screen for the GoToWebinar uh, application. And there, there should be a button called questions um, or even a chat area um, that you can send in some of your, your, your questions or thoughts. And uh, pre please uh, feel free to do that. Um, the more information you can give us about your thoughts on today's uh, topic, the more um, we'll be able to tailor the message to you and really kind of have a dialogue through today's um, presentation. Um, so before I introduce our speaker, I wanted to give a little bit about um, SageWorks. Um, so we've been in the industry since 1998, um, and really SageWorks was born out of a love for um, small business owners, um, and it grew to a love for business owners. Um, and we really realized that the best way that we could serve business owners was by first serving accountants, um, giving them the ability to um, look at real-time uh, data from uh, private company financials so that they can make informed decisions um, that could best help uh, their clients, um, those business owners. Um, so through the years, we've kind of developed a, a, a really the largest real-time database of private company financials in the United States, um, and we build our tools and our services uh, around helping accountants deliver some differentiated value um, that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and Adam, whom I'm about to present to you, he's going to be really um, providing the, the the ideas and the practical steps you can take to really adding um, some value to the compliance engagements that you're just going through day to day, um, especially as tax season comes up and how important that is um, for you and also for um, the businesses that you serve. So to introduce Adam, um, Adam Blitz is uh, the principal and uh, a consultant uh, at Get Blitz Solutions. Um, he has 12 years of experience in the industry um, and had various roles in all kinds of sizes of accounting firms. Um, Adam's really gifted, and, and so far working with him, I've uh, really been able to see his love for businesses, just as SageWorks loves businesses, um, and also really his practical ability to apply um, kind of those how-to best practices of really growing your firm and scaling it um, in a way that delivers value um, and keeps people coming back to you and keeps people talking about you. Um, so we're really excited that uh, we can work with Adam, um, and he's going to um, kind of dive into some of his uh, presentation, and uh, we'll be coming back uh, to you a little bit later from now. But uh, I just wanted to introduce him, and I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over the uh, controls to him right now. Uh, so thanks for joining us, Adam. Thanks a lot, Zach. Uh, give me one second here. All right. All right. Um, thanks a lot for having me. Um, this is a, a great opportunity, and I look forward to uh, connecting with all of you guys on the line. Um, my name is Adam Blitz. I'm uh, based here in California, so it's a, a wet day here in California. Uh, went to UCSB. Uh, I actually have a master's in leadership studies to go along with uh, 
my CPA license. Uh, I wrote the most exciting thesis ever about the leading CPA. Uh, I've been uh, practicing or practicing in the accounting profession for the last 10 plus years. Uh, in 2015, I became a uh, Boston qualified marathoner and uh, a half Ironman, and uh, that's only uh, due to the patience and uh, of my awesome wife and uh, two two little boys. Um, so uh, I'm really excited to be here and, and uh, talk to you guys about how to add value to your practices this uh, this tax season. Um, but before we get going, I think Zach is going to ask a couple of uh, questions. Yeah, we had a, a few poll questions, and these poll questions are kind of designed to give Adam and myself an idea of what um, people we have online with us today. So um, the first question is kind of geared towards the size of your firm, and just uh, um, that will really kind of help put some flesh around the kind of difficulties you're facing um, and kind of the, the way we can gear today's talk. So go ahead and um, start answering those questions. and. Uh, we have a few more seconds left on it. I uh, kind of want to give everybody an opportunity to uh, put their vote there. Uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Um, and just so everyone else can kind of see um, what today's audience looks like is, you know, we have a lot of uh, smaller firms, um, but also kind of a diversification as well. Um, we have some mid-size and then even um, some uh, 50 to 250 size firms as well. So um, that's kind of who's here today, um, and that will be helpful for Adam and myself and kind of for you guys as well to understand um, what we're going to be talking about. Uh, and now this is a little bit more specific question for, for you. Um, what is your job title at your firm? Um, we kind of want to understand, you know, what is the, the position that you're in and, and kind of how um, the challenges you're, you're facing really impact your day-to-day -day decision making. Got a few more seconds here, and I'm going to go ahead and close it out, and then we're going to get on our way with Adam. All right. Well, Adam, you can uh, go ahead and, and uh, take it away from here. Perfect. Sounds good. So um, why I do what I do. Um, I love helping CPAs grow their practices. Um, I believe that there's a uh, um, always a way to become better. So on a day-to-day on -day -day basis, we're constantly uh, learning, exploring. Um, Building our professional capabilities, and um, and and I want to figure out exactly how we can provide those uh, great skills that we have in a more um, efficient manner to to more and more clientele. And I think that's why you guys are all here today is is to provide more value uh, to your clients to become that profit center uh, for your for your clients. But to some degree. You know, even though we went to uh, college and, and we all have uh, the managerial, we all have the tax, we have the financial background, we forget about what we're doing um, or what opportunities that are out there because we're so busy in our practice. We're so busy working on our clientele. And so I, I briefly want to go into this video, what is accounting, because I think that it helps us. Um, sorry. Business. Well, you could say business is like somebody taking a hammer, building a house, and then taking his stuff that he made and selling it to somebody with money. Then they make their exchange and it's all good. Another way to look at business is that it is a magical box. You take raw materials, put it in the box, and then it comes out as goods that you can then sell and make money. That box is business. So let's say you have a business. You make something that costs you $100 to make and you sell it for $200. You have a profit of $100 and you're happy. I just told you a story about a business that made $100. So who should we tell our story to? You might want to tell your story to banks or investors. Banks or investors want to hear your story because they might want to lend you money or invest money in your business. Another person who wants to hear your story is Uncle Sam. He wants to tax you. We could break it down into three different people that want to hear your story. People on the inside or internal users, people on the outside, external users, or the government. The language by which you tell these people stories is sometimes called managerial accounting for internal users, financial accounting for external users, and then tax accounting for government users. If you've ever taken an accounting 
going to stop it right there because what I really want to get at, and I cut myself off a little bit before I got into this video, was that a lot of us are doing tax work, a lot of us are doing financial work, a lot of us are being controllers and doing managerial work. But oftentimes we're not exploring those boundaries of what other opportunities are out there. So if we're stuck in a tax-minded organization, that's great, but we also have that opportunity to explore well, what, what managerial or internal uh, opportunities are, are available to our clientele. And we have that data to really provide um, great insight and great analysis for our clientele, but we, we stop short of, of providing that data. Um, so we'll create tax solutions, we'll create financial solutions to make our to bump our financials, make them look really good, but we won't tell that story of how are we actually doing, what can we do to improve, how can we become uh, better businesses, better uh, better practitioners, and um, provide our clients with higher level resources. So the way I like to look at at uh, accounting practices is, is that, again, oftentimes we're so stuck on what's due tomorrow that we're not looking at what's out there in the future. Where do we want to be? How do we want to be viewed? How do we want to uh, explore um, the opportunities that are out there? And without a path, it's really hard to get there. Um, so what I really like to do is create a path towards uh, your goals. So, you know, we're, we're here at a New Year's resolution um, time period and, and, you know, it's that time to figure out, okay, what goals do I have? And not just say, hey, I want to do X, I want to do Y, but actually create that path and have checks and balances and celebrate successes along the way, along that path. Um, so, as we go through today, I want to explore what value add uh, what value additions that we can uh, add to our clientele without spending absorbent amount of time to create those opportunities. So the first thing I like to do is, is figure out what your firm does best. Um, oftentimes you'll find that uh, um, firms fail to figure out what they do and, and how they do it, and because of that, they just take anything that comes in the door. Um, but even when you do that, you still typically have some kind of niche, some kind of uh, solution that you're constantly um, offering to, to your clientele. You're, you're constantly uh, providing similar solutions over and over and over. So even if you don't have an industry niche, what is your natural niche? Who's coming into your office on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? Who's coming in that you like to serve? Um, so if you think about people in Los Angeles, you're probably thinking about people in the entertainment industry. What are, who, are, who are those people and what is the common theme? So if you can identify what that niche is and who you want to serve and what theme that you want to uh, serve to, you're going to have a good step forward. So I would take that as step one in creating and identifying what the value is that you're going to add. So then once you identified what the industry is, then what kind of economic issues are going on? So are, are the businesses that are coming in or the individuals that are coming in, are they in growth stage? Are they downsizing? Do they have a high cash flow? Do they have low cash flow? You know, what kind of local economy and regulatory issues are, are, are going on uh, in your area that you can really implement uh, solutions to, to your uh, client base? Um, and then once you understand those economic issues, you can figure out, okay, well, what opinions do you have? What kind of forward thinking, what kind of services are these clientele going to need that I can offer in a box to these clientele so that I can say, hey, um, you know, I'm already doing your tax return, but I can really see in, in the summer or uh, in the fall that, hey, you're going to also need this, this, and this. And then you can just talk to them about it during tax season and, and get it on the books for, for the summer. So having those opinions, having those forward-thinking opportunities is really important, and talking to your clients about these issues is, is uh, the key to generating that business as you do go forward. Um, so what are the problems that you solve? So you have your industry and you have your current conditions. So once you know those two items, you can develop two solutions to ensure that your clients are, are, are aware or are in position to get around the problems that they're going to face in the future. Um, so if you can come up 
based on your industry, based on the current economic conditions, based on technology that's available today, what two solutions that you could just uh, knock out uh, over and over and over. Because again, we're talking to the same industry, we're talking to people with similar issues, talking to people in similar areas, in similar uh, communities that oftentimes have the, have the same problems. So what are those go-to solutions that you can just provide again and again and again? Um, one way that I like to, to find those solutions or, or what problems there are is that when you're talking to people via phone calls or emails, um, when you're having meetings this tax season, talk to them about, hey, where are your struggles? What do you expect for this year? What are you looking for? Um, um, you know, how is your business developing? How are you closing up? Whatever the issues are, make sure that it's a consistent theme and talk to, the, talk to your clients over and over and over about the same issues. And then you have results. So when you propose these solutions, you need to talk to your, your clientele base about what kind of results are going to happen uh, once you employ these solutions. So is there going to be an increase in productivity? Is there going to be an improvement in cash flow? Is there going to be a reduction in overhead? Improvement in margins? Reduced tension? Uh, reduced, reduced employee tension? Reduced employee turnover? What issue are you trying to solve and how can you uh, go ahead and say, if you go ahead and sign up with me, we're going to go ahead and solve this problem, not through a technical, uh, overwhelming consulting engagement that's um, customized and, and, and created specifically for, for one client, but a solution that will help the greater community, that will help the, the client in a box that's not going to be an overwhelming cost. At the end of the day, what you want your, what we're trying to get to is that you guys are a profit center. You're, you're providing a solution that's going to hit a major issue that, that your clients are facing and you're going to have that boxed in a, in a package. Just like you have those uh, tax solutions, they're set up in a box, they're, they're not, they're, in some cases they're customized, but you have the process to get it done efficiently. We're trying to do the same thing for these compliance engagements or for these uh, non-compliance engagements as well. Okay, so one issue that I find that, that limits our capability in order to uh, provide these solutions is our firm perce perception, all right? Um, so I like to view this in, in a couple of different areas. How are we viewed internally? How are we viewed externally? And how are we viewed by the community, all right? Um, and the reason I like to, there, there's a limitation here is because if our staff, you know, internally, if we see ourselves as tax providers, well, we're not going to go outside that box. We're going to say, oh, we provide tax returns, that's enough. Are we going to go above and beyond that? Nah, that's not in our job description, that's not in our, in our overall con conception of what we do. Um, if, if we're stuck on tax, tax uh, providing tax returns or providing uh, financial statements, that's great. You know, that's a great solution. But we have to expand our awareness, right? So if we're if we view ourselves as business experts or as tax solutions providers um, rather than just tax preparers, we're going to provide a higher level service. We're going to talk to our clients in a higher level manner. We're going to um, uh, work with uh, our, our staff to, pr to, pr to implement efficient solutions. We're going to do everything that we can to leverage all that knowledge that we have to provide great solutions to our clientele rather than just being, well, we provide tax returns in an in a efficient manner. And, th and that's great, you know, that we need to provide those tax returns in efficient manners, but if we're stuck at that, then what's next? What are we going to do next? How are we going to how are we going to uh, overcome the other challenges that our clients really want us to help us help them out with? They don't hey, necessarily. Hey, no. Hey Adam. Adam. Yeah. This is a uh, time for one of our poll questions. Sorry Please. to interrupt on your flow there, um, but I, I really think this is going to help too because it lines up so perfectly with the the content. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and launch it. But you know, kind of when you're uh, viewing yourself or how the, the firm views itself internally, um, you know, what is the largest barrier to implementing new services to clients? Um, and I think of, of one of those that could be kind of like that internal. Um, it's the fear of rejection. Um, you know, fees possibly being too high or, or no time to implement them. Uh, maybe lack of opportunity or not enough uh, employees to kind of manage that idea of what the new workload would be like. Um, so I really think this matches up well. So uh, if, if attendees want to go ahead and, and kind of answer this, and also you know feel free to to be sending in your your thoughts on some of these um, ideas too, and, and maybe if you want to uh, you know if you select one of these and want to kind of give some more flesh to uh, why you're afraid of this or, or what your hesitancy is, uh, that would be a great time to do that. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and close that out. And I'm also going to share this with everybody, too, because I think it's always helpful to know, you know, how, how, how am I doing compared to other people? Are we in the same kind of boat here? Um, it looks like, you know, it's kind of spread across really evenly. And um, so uh, if you're here and think there's something really uniquely strange about your firm, you know, there's other people in the boat with you. Um, so. Uh, I know Adam's going to continue to provide some really great uh, insight and help into you know how to kind of navigate through some of these uh, barriers to implementation. Zach, sorry about that. I had that in my notes and uh, just failed to actually acknowledge my notes. It's all good. Um, you were just on a roll and, and you were doing great. So um, to to get back to the issue of uh, we need to evaluate how we we look at ourselves internally how the owners, partners, managers, supervisors, staff, and admin staff look at ourselves um, and what we expect to provide to our clients. So again, we're not just tax preparers, we're tax solutions or advisors or we're business experts. And so when you can uh, compound that, then all of a sudden all the opportunities are available to you. Uh, that managerial accounting um, aspect of, of providing controllership services or providing that financial statement analysis, that's open to you. Um, and the same thing on the finance, if you're an auditor, uh, you can all of a sudden transition from all of a sudden questioning your, your client to, okay, how can we fix some of these problems um, rather than just provide the audit, provide the tax return, and just be done with it. Oops. All right. Externally, so you know, being in, in a tax practice for uh, quite a few years, what I oftentimes found was that uh, clients would oftentimes provide us with important information after it happened. So once you get that data, and you you know you could have uh, implemented a tax solution prior to uh, the event happening. Afterwards, you're struggling and and you're you're figuring out, okay, well, what can we do now? And I find that, that uh, CPAs that I work with all the time are constantly in that backtracking uh, um, position where we're looking at, oh shoot, my client did this, now I gotta figure out what to do in order to save them some tax money rather than having a plan for the future to say, okay, this is where we can, this is a, a, a long-term solution to meet the client's goals. Um, so vendors, referral sources, they often don't know what we do either. They oftentimes think, oh, well, they provide financial statements, or they do bookkeeping, or they, do, uh, they, they prepare tax returns. But if they only see you as a compliance provider, um, you're not getting into the higher level opportunities that are, that are uh, available that, that you've been trained upon uh, you know, back when you were in college over the last however many years you've been in practice, you've been trained on, on implementing all this knowledge to help your clients grow rather than just say, okay, I'm going to sign that tax return, okay, I'm going to sign that financial statement. So how do we get others to think differently of what we do, right? How do we get them over the fact of, oh, we just provide a tax return, oh, we're just going to talk to them in, in March and April, or oh, we're just going to talk to them if, uh, whenever we after we have a, a crisis rather than before crises occur. And so one way to do that is constantly being in front of our clients. You know, I know that I, as a practitioner, I, I'm oftentimes going into articles and about the industry, about 
um, my clients industry and learning more and more every day about what's going on in the world, what economic issues are out there, what uh, financial issues are out there, and just sharing that with, with uh, uh, my clientele, sharing that with my vendors, sharing that with my referral sources. They can see that, oh, you know, maybe I should talk to this person about it. Maybe I should talk to my CPA about, hey, I'm, I'm doing this transaction, rather than, rather than just it being like, oh, it's tax season, let's go ahead and talk to my tax preparer. Um, so the more that you can exp expound upon everything that you're learning on a day-to-day -day basis, the more you can talk about it on LinkedIn, propose a solution, propose a, um, your unique outlook on those issues, people want to hear it because people trust you. People believe that, that you know, uh, you have a higher level of knowledge, an experience factor, um, that people want to come to you and say, hey, what do you think of this? But if all they see is, hey, I have my head down during tax season, well, then they just want to get out of your way and don't really want to talk to you until they actually have to. Um, so the more that we can be out there on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever it is, share your opinions. People want to know about it. Um, and if people don't want to know about it, you know what? They'll just ignore it. And it's not the end of the world. Um, for as many people that want to hear it, people don't. Um, it, keep your head up and, uh, and keep sharing and keep espousing your, your viewpoints and, and outlooks. And people will, will, uh, will tend to, uh, to follow that. So the community. How does the community, you know, whether it's an industry community or whether it's your local community, view you as another firm or do they view you as an innovator? Um, and so the way I, I, I look at this is, does a, is your local uh, community talking, to, talking about you in the capacity that, oh, you're just uh, you're a tax provider, or you're a financial statement provider? Are they looking at you as an audit company, a tax solution company, or are they looking at you as a business leader? Are they looking at you as a solution provider that's going to come up with strategies to, to grow businesses, to be, build a better community? And the more that you can focus on those opportunities to, to grow businesses, to create jobs, to um, implement new solutions and new strategies within your community, the more your community is going to talk about you as an innovator. And that's what you want to be known as because being an innovator is a, is a value add. There, and, and becoming an innovator, what you can charge your, your fees to your clients is going to be a lot higher than what you can charge for a, uh, just a non or a compliance uh, uh, service. Zero time add value additions. Um, so I want to go into this really quick, and uh, this is kind of what you guys are here for. So uh, I want to talk about some ideas that you guys can add during this tax season, during this busy season, to ensure that you add value but don't spend much time doing it, okay? Um, so we're all delivering tax returns, financial statements, compliance projects, right? Um, I think that's... Uh, that, that's pretty standard for, for a lot of CPA firms around the country, is these things are happening. Well, in doing so, you know, you're emailing people, you're meeting with people, and you have phone calls with people, all right? Now, some opportunities, when you're emailing somebody, can you also include important links, you know, just in your footer? You know, update your footer and for portal access. Um, and these are value-add things that, oh, I don't have to remember where the portal is as a client. I can just know that's going to be in the footer of, uh, of my, oops, excuse me, uh, of my, uh, my CPA's um, email. So every time it always has, um, it, they can just go to, the, to your, any one of your emails and say, okay, I have portal access in the footer. Alternatively, you know, maybe there's some news source. Maybe there's a blog that, that you're doing. Um, whatever it is, whatever, maybe it's like your LinkedIn account that you want people to access, have easy access to. And it's just providing that extra insight as to, hey, this guy's more than a tax provider. Hey, this guy's more than a, a financial statement provider. So when you have clients in your office and you're meeting with them on a, on a daily, weekly, whatever it is, however often you're meeting with these clients, 
show off your technology. You already bought it. Show it off. You know, I, I know that a lot of CPAs like to like to buy uh, technology from the latest shows, um, and it you know it looks really good on uh, on, on the shelf. Um, but show off the technology in your office. Show off um, what opportunities you know, whether it's ProfitSense or any other technology that you that you have. Show them the dashboards that you're able to come up with, so that um, they have an insight as to wow, this guy's really on top of. Um, the the technology opportunities for an accounting uh, department. Additionally, you you wouldn't think an agenda is a value add, but having a set agenda is a is a, a value addition to a meeting. So have agendas, have plans, have organization, because what that will show is that you're in charge. You're you have a plan, you have a path, you know exactly what's what's going on. You're in control. Um, and that just gives a little bit more extra comfort to your clientele. So you're not doing anything additional. Uh, you're not spending additional time planning things. You already have these things in the background. Just go ahead and, and show them to your clients and, and put it in front of them so that they can uh, take advantage of it as well and, and have that um, understanding of, hey, well, I want this in my company as well. I want my uh, I want my people to have this organization. I want my people to see this is the way that we're supposed to work. Um, and maybe there's engagements that can come out of that. When you're having phone calls, um, you know, it seems, uh, it, it, it seems CPAs are always available. I know a lot of you guys give out your uh, cell phone number to your clients. Consider texting them. Just being respondent, uh, being there and available to your clientele gives them that extra comfort and that extra added value um, of what's going on um, that, that you're in control of, uh, of, their, of, of their tax situation or their financial situation. Um, purpose. When you're having a phone call, I know that we all like to, to chat about, hey, how the last golf game was or, or, or whatever's going on within, within the family. Uh, you know, you want to talk a little bit about that. But make sure to focus on the purpose of the call. Make sure that um, the purpose of the call is focused and, and concise and just like the meeting so that there's value that they can see um, that's coming out of that conversation. And then after the phone call, if you can have an outline and results of what occurred and why it occurred, that might be a little bit of additional time, but at least it keeps you and them in communication as to what exactly is going on um, with uh, with the engagement, all right. Alternatively, um, sorry, let's come in here really quick. Um, rather than doing phone calls, rather than doing um, um, in-person meetings, consider conference video calls. I know that you can't see me here. I typically like to be on video, but um, I w it's always more personal. If you can see the person's face, if you can see how uh, people are reacting to issues, there's value adds there. Uh, computer takeovers, there's systems that you can implement that are free um, that you can, if you're going into somebody's QB account and trying to talk them through um, what changes to make, rather than wasting your time doing that, trying to train somebody, go ahead and just take over their computer for them uh, from a web enabled um, program. And, and go ahead and take it over. Cloud accessibility. Make sure that your clients have have uh, access to all their data at any time. If you don't have a portal set up, make sure that they're uh, it, it's available and that they know how to easily access uh, their data. Because what you're also doing here is you're not only adding value in the fact that they have access to their data you're reducing the time that they need to call you and say, hey, can you email this to me? Hey, can you send this to me? Because what it's a double-edged sword there. You're, you're having to spend more time, and they're not able to access, do a, have a do-it-yourself solution. Regular business discussions and hold clients accountable. Right? There's value adds here. Um, if you're talking to your client uh, you know, every quarter, Consider increasing that to, to shorter conversations on a monthly basis because what happens there is they get used to talking to you, then they want to talk to you, then they need to talk to you. 
And then through that process, you're holding your clients accountable. You're not just saying, oh, I understand. Um, can you get this information to me later this week? No. The, the solution is, okay, what's the issue? How can we fix this? And when we can fix something, there's value there. Okay? Um, Lastly, I just want to go into profit sense reports. These are so simple to, to provide and, and create uh, at an instant notice. We're all providing tax returns or, or financial statements. It takes, and, and Chad will go into this in a little bit, but it takes five to less than five minutes to create a um, competition comparison report. So you don't have to put in the client's information, but if you can see what's going on with local organizations, and how you can compare, or just saying, hey, this is the information that we have coming from profit sense reports on what your margin should look like, what your uh, wage uh, expense should look like, what your GNA should look like. And if you can say, hey, you guys are kind of out of line here, there is a ton of value there that takes literally no time to just attach to the tax return that you're already sending out. On a more sophisticated level, once you're in profit sense, you could go through the, the effects of a percentage change, right? So you could show, you know, again, being in the beginning of the year here, we have the opportunity to show our clients if we increased our sales by 1%, what would that look like on the bottom line, right? And that just makes them work a little bit harder, create a path, um, develop a path to, to implement the steps that they can um, that they can take to ensure that they meet their goals. Um, because oftentimes you'll find that your clients don't know um, what a percentage change will look like in, in an expense account, in a, a GNA, in a um, in a revenue position. They don't know and because they don't know, they don't have the motivation to actually get there. And if you can just motivate them a little bit, there's a, a ton of value out there. Right, and I think um, Zach has one more question for you guys. That's right. I have a, a poll question here, real quick, uh, for you guys, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it. This is again kind of you know giving us a feel for where you guys are at. Um, the question is: Is your firm proactively providing advisory services? And those advisory services are kind of you know added value services that uh, Adam's been talking about, and. Um, this is kind of a great way for you to kind of have an understanding of where you're at and, um, and kind of how we can continue to further tailor our messaging to you guys um, about, you know, if, if you're, you know, just now starting kind of to add that value or if you're, you know, a, a few ways into it and, and trying to reimagine how, you do it, how you're doing it. Um, so go ahead and do that. And also I want to encourage if you, if you uh, at any time, you know, have, have a thought or question about, any of these things, you know, Adam's always available. He wants to answer questions, and so are we. Um, and so just go ahead and feel free to email us or um, go ahead and chat it to us now. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and close it out. Um, and I'll, I'll share with you just again so everybody can kind of see where they're at real quick. Um, you know, we have about half of today's uh, attendees at a place of, um, you know, where they're actually providing advisory services, uh, which is a good thing. And, and, you know, maybe they're here today revisiting, you know, how they're doing that, how they can do that in a scalable way to grow their firm. Uh, and then we have some other people here today that um, are kind of in that process, maybe not as proactive, uh, um, but then we have people who are in compliance or people who don't uh, proactively provide advisory services at all. Uh, so that's good that we have a wide variety here today, and I know we're going to kind of continue to, to talk about this and look at it today. Um, so I'll hand it back over to Adam now. Yeah, I just wanted to finish off with, um, you know, becoming a profit center. I'll, I'll be pretty quick here. Um, but, you know, just in, in hearing the stats of, of, you know, about half of us are, are, are doing more uh, advisory services, there's always the opportunity to do more of it. Um, our clients want it. Our clients need it. Um, so if we're stuck on 1099 payroll filing, uh, financial statements, tax returns, property tax returns, and then just repeating that 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 um, that practice. We want to focus more on okay, how can we automate those solutions? How can we get out of the the um, uh, daily and and weekly um, 
mud of just continuing to, uh, to, to do those systems um, without automation. And we want to focus in on, okay, let's do financial analysis, budget to actual evaluation, industry comparisons, key KPIs, enhancement of decision making. Uh, we want to focus in on estate planning, um, process improvements, uh, oops, and then also internal controls. And these are all opportunities that are all at the gra at your grasp if we can just get the, the compliance work under control. Once we have the opportunity to get that compliance work under control in an efficient manner, that opens us up to, to provide a lot of these value additions that we can A, charge more for, B, be viewed as profit centers, um, and, and C, really help our clients achieve the goals um, that, that, they want, that, that they want to reach. And what, what happens then is then all of a sudden our communities are happy, our, our people are happy, um, we're, we're internally doing the work that we set out to do because I guarantee you that most of us didn't come out of college thinking that, oh, all we're going to do is tax return preparation. We thought about, hey, we're motivated, we're excited, let's make this world a better place for our kids. And by doing these, these things, internal controls, um, process, oops, process improvements, estate planning, and financial analysis, that, those things will make our, our world a better place. Um, providing our, our compliance work, it's just something that we have to do. Um, so let's focus on, on moving to the right uh, and, and doing this really high level work that's really going to provide value to your clients. So I just want to thank uh, Zach and, and Chad for having me on. And if you guys have any questions, I look forward to uh, taking them. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, and so Adam's right now is kind of shifting off, but where he's going to be on the line still, uh, and he's going to be here for a kind of a question and answer time uh, coming up. So right now I'm just shifting uh, controls over to Chad Wright, who's one of my uh, constituents, and he is kind of our consulting expert. Um, so to speak, and he has a lot of great insight on some of the, the product stuff that um, that Adam was just talking about and kind of like this leave behind marketing um, value added things that you can be doing. Uh, and then I have some things that I'm going to share on kind of the challenges that firms are facing and, and, and how we can kind of band together and, and grow um, this accounting uh, industry that's kind of been facing, you know, a kind of a similar set of of challenges, but I'm going to hand it over to Chad real quick, and he's going to kind of uh, show off a little bit about what Adam was talking about. Sure. Thanks, uh, Zach and, and Adam, for allowing me to speak here. I just wanted to kind of reiterate a lot of what uh, Adam has been talking about today and working with, you know, your, your clients on a more proactive basis, especially in providing uh, consultative and advisory work. And really, a lot of what he says is, is in line with what profit sense will enable you to do with using technology and software to be able to do that. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with ProfitSense, uh, it is a web-based or a cloud-based uh, software. So it's always going to be the most up-to-date, the most recent uh, version of, of software that you'll have available. You'll have the opportunity to access it anywhere that you're working there uh, with the Internet. But as far as just some of the products or some of the applications we have available, um, and looking at, at some of the timelines of what he was talking about, let's say, for example, with, with tax season, you know, we know a lot of you guys are, are spending the majority of your time being oversaturated with, with doing um, tax returns, whether it be for individuals or for businesses. But in reality, it's a great opportunity to add value to the businesses you're working with. Um, we provide a solution that you can, you can run in just a matter of seconds or a matter of minutes to add that value. So looking at this report for our industry data, this is a report, as Adam mentioned, you're not even required to put in customer data. You simply run a report for a specific industry that you're interested in. If you'd like to narrow it down by a sales range or a geographic location, you can certainly do so. But what we're going to do is we're going to provide you insight into that industry. The data we've collected for the past 15 years uh, in the industry for all of these uh, uh, basic you know, financial metrics, as well as for industry-specific metrics. So being able to talk to your clients on a more sophisticated level of how their uh, competition is doing. So what a lot of our customers will do is they will take two minutes and run this report. They'll simply attach that uh, to a tax return and use that as a conversation starter. You know, if you want to have one of your admin staff prepare this, you can certainly do that. If you want to do it yourself, it's easy enough to do that. But a lot of our customers will take this and say, okay, let's look at a specific ratio. 
net profit margin, for example, you know, climbing from 2.2 to 3%, up to 5%. Maybe we write a quick note in the margin that says, hey, let's talk about this come May. Are you experiencing the same growth, right? So just the ability to kind of stimulate some conversation during the tax season so that you're preparing yourself for more meetings along the way. Um, Adam mentioned, you know, if you're having these meetings maybe quarterly, right, let's try to figure out how we can have these meetings more often. Maybe if it's monthly or, or, or you know, by quarterly, by monthly, something like that. Being able to do this and take the actual client's data, we, all, we actually provide you a sophisticated report as well. Once you enter in your client data, and this can be done through a variety of ways. If you want to do data manual entry, that's perfectly fine. We do integrate, as we'll show you later, with a variety of softwares like QuickBooks, uh, Excel, uh, you know, Creative Solutions, Caseware, even uh, electronic tax returns. But we do provide you a very, uh, just an overview of how that company is doing. Right, looking at their areas of liquidity, looking at the areas of profitability. We're going to convert all that financial data into a narrative, give you a nice, concise report that you can sit down and have that sophisticated discussion with your clients. Right, So you're not just talking numbers with them. You're actually talking about how they're doing. You're talking about how they compare to the industry. How do they even compare versus your clients? Right, They're locally. Right, Having those conversations, holding them more accountable for what they're doing. Um, this report, is, as we've learned, has been great for uh, conversations, um, being able to question the clients, right? Like, how do they think they're doing? Why are they doing well in certain areas and not in certain areas, right? Giving them goals to um, perform better. So when you do the meet with them next time, how can we use this as kind of a, a stimulus into that next meeting? So it's just really, it's, it's a nice visual, it's a nice client deliverable to be able to have that intelligent conversation. Now, last but not least, uh, Adam had also mentioned the availability to really provide kind of a what-if scenarios, right? So if you really have those more progressive clients that not only want to see how they've done historically, but how can they make improvements going forward? We do have the ability to provide a, a projected um, report where we can look at the income statement data, the balance sheet data. We can even provide a cash flow projection. Now, if you want to do anywhere between one and ten years, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the way I like to show this the best is really looking at one year at a time. So if we look at an initial year, we're going to look at income statement data and balance sheet data. We can look at a company that, you know, maybe they have areas in cash flow where they need to do better. And as Adam mentioned, you know, we can look at things like something like receivable days. They have 37 receivable days. The industry has 17. What happens if that company can trim that down to 30 days, right? We can show those effects instantly for this company, right? If they were just to, to lower their receivable days, essentially they could increase their cash flow in that same year, right? So just being able to do this in real time and very simply is, is a huge benefit of using ProfitSense as the software itself. Um, I do want to uh, have Zach, I know we got some slides we want to go through here outside of the software, so I want to make that transition. Zach, if you can jump back on and uh, we'll look at the slides themselves outside of the software here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for handing that back over, Chad. Uh, yeah, so one of the things I kind of wanted to visit today, uh, a lot of what Adam was talking about, and then even some of the poll questions that we had had, uh, to kind of get a feel for some of your barriers for kind of implementing these new added value services. Um, and you can see kind of a list of six uh, challenges that accounting uh, and even business valuation firms have kind of been facing. Um, and, you know, as you read them, as you look at them, you kind of see like, yeah, I, I get that. And uh, we understand that that resonates with you because we have thousands of conversations with accountants every month um, where this is something that, um, you know, we're always talking with them about and trying to help them navigate. And really, we've kind of split them into, you know, two sections. Um, and so what that, what that looks like is the, the scaling your practice or the growth aspect of it. And that kind of looks like, you know, acquiring and retaining clients and, and generating scalable firm growth. Um, then also communicating complex financials to clients that doesn't require huge amounts of time for you um, and that gives them something to do that's actionable that they understand. Because uh, as you know, they don't really get the impact of understanding numbers as well as you do. Um, so in that kind of communication um, and acquiring and retaining clients is kind of that building up of your practice. Um, and that kind of correlates to, you know, that's great and everything, but what's something that's really going to sustain that? What's kind of the infrastructure that we can put in place? And that kind of comes down to making sure that you have the right talent and the uh, right amount of talent to be there to um, provide the services and the kind of touch points that your firm wants to provide to its clients. 
Um, that also looks like scaling uh, the work you do, doing the you know more amount of work in less time by adopting new technology and integrating web-based software so that you can be working from different locations or be um, or be a, a you know at a different uh, firm or, or a client that you're working with and go ahead and pull their information up just like that. Um, and really what that bleeds into is these six challenges is kind of what Adam's been talking about today is trying to get past and ways to do that very easily. And then also kind of how um, SageWorks has built our product um, is to be something that's, you know, a, a remedy and that really helps you deliver value. Because um, as we all know, value is the real differentiator in the accounting industry. Um, and what that looks like is that global accessibility, a customizable report to kind of give uh, the feel on, of the financials, um, you know, that, that professional look and, and that makes the client feel like, hey, this is uniquely made for me. They spent time on this. this they care about me. Um, then also simple integration of financials, which we'll talk about in a second, which really that gets into the kind of the cutting down that time so that you can do more. Um, instead of spending, you know, weeks trying to figure out projections, it's like you can do projections in a few days. Um, even cut it down even to a few hours. Um, and it's all kind of built on uh, SageWorks industry data, which is uh, beautiful because you don't have to go and gather all those data points, but we've done that um, and want to try and give some insights that make it easier for you to do. Um, and so what that, what that looks like and kind of what Adam's been talking about today, you can see that little um, blue dot on the, on the, I guess, the top section of your screen. Uh, right next to diagnose and analyze your client financials. And that little blue dot is meant to, you know, kind of show the, the little compliance work that you can do and that you do every single year over year. Um, but there's little options all shooting off that. Um, you can see by the other dots, and those are, you know, advisory services, valuations, forecasting, audits, you know, uh, succession planning, a lot of options and opportunities for you to provide value um, that a lot of times get missed because you're so flooding your inbox with um, taxes or more com or more compliance work. Um, so really, what um, Adam's kind of been talking about and what we've been talking about today is you know trying to really get a better lifestyle for you as an accountant and also create more value for the business that you're serving. Um, and what that ends up doing is when you kind of like you know remove a ton of that compliance work and, and then introduce those more lucrative compliance um, offer, or consulting opportunities, and you end up saving time, as you can kind of see by the second half of the, on your screen, um, that time can be reallocated. Um, it can be reallocated to the services that you want to sell, or it can be um, spent with your family. You know, um, I think a lot of times uh, CPAs are overworked, and, and we know that uh, from talking to you guys, you feel exhausted, and sometimes you just want to go spend time with your family. So really, we're, we're here to help you. Um, and I know that's one of the things that I'm trying to show too. Um, and, th and this is, you know, kind of saying that same point. Um, you kind of see here on the on the left side is like time spent per engagement. Um, then on the bottom is number of services sold. So our goal is to help you kind of reduce the time spent on the really time intensive compliance work and really help you to sell more services with more scalable opportunities um, with consulting engagements. Um, that. And we all know that that's kind of the, the sprinkling on top of the day-to-day -day work that you do with your compliance work. Um, and so really all this kind of comes down to this cycle that I'm sure you're, you're kind of familiar with and really we want to be something that kind of strengthens the cycle. Um, of, you know, you see step one is kind of acquiring and develop clients. Um, and as Adam was talking about, you know, this kind of takeaway that you can, you know, provide a client or a prospect. It's something that you can leave behind that really kind of draws their attention to the fact that you actually have something valuable to say and something tangible that they can then go and do that will make their business better. And it's kind of about that um, added value of being proactive rather than reactive and having that valuable information that, that really signifies step two of di differentiating your firm um, and selling additional services because there's going to be so many opportunities to identify areas of weakness um, that you can help your clients strengthen. Um, and really all that comes through, which I think, you know, three is, is you know, kind of where we're going. Um, just in society in general and especially in the accounting industry is that things are becoming more automated. Um, data is being collected. And really we want to be a source for you to have, to not worry about getting the data. Um, where we have, you know, solid data that is um, aggregated from CPAs and, and bankers and um, so that we know it's solid. It's not uh, self-reported, but it's, 
something that has gone through a really rigorous testing and uh, it's something that's there so that you can compare your clients to it. Um, and this is something that you know kind of automatically sets itself up for referrals and repeat cycle um, because it truly is something that people talk about um, and really find value in. Um, and so with that, you know, this is something about the cutting that time that I kind of wanted to introduce and, and Chad's going to hop back on with me here. Um, but this is something new that we introduced and we wanted to introduce it uh, specifically for tax season because we understand, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have all the time in the world during tax season, you know. Uh, it's, it's really busy and really hard for you, um, but at the same time you need to start kind of teeing things up for um, after tax season. Uh, and so this is a, a, a technology that, uh, that Chad's going to tell us a little bit about here, but ultimately it's something that um, is going to reduce the amount of time that you have to take to input um, client financials um, to the point where you can actually start looking for those consulting opportunities that you can then um, mention in a, in a tax meeting and then actually perform um, once tax season's over. Yeah, I, mean, I think one of the biggest objections we've always gotten is, is the time that it would take to put data into the system manually. So we've, we're always constantly evolving in, in what we integrate with. And so as I mentioned earlier, you know, as you see on the right-hand side, you know, we have the ability to pull financials in from QuickBooks and Pro Systems Engagement, Excel, Xero, so on and so forth. But what we really found was a need to be able to pull that directly from electronic tax returns. So as you can see on the left-hand side, we have created a compatible um, software with Drake and the CERT with Pro Series, with CCH Pro Systems, and also with UltraTax, where literally as long as you have the electronic tax return, we can read that information, we can input the data or import the data and convert that into uh, the financials needed to run the profit sense reports. We want to take data entry out of the equation whatsoever, so that's not an issue um, for you guys. As you can see there, you know, you could save you know, up to 30 minutes per client. You can quickly identify opportunities to cross-sell during the tax season. Um, also, you eliminate the risk of the manual entry, and then also just the automated mapping, right? Just lining up those line items for you is, is a huge time savings for you guys. So we want to really just kind of take that, um, the data entry, off the table. Um, the last thing I want to touch on here, this is something that's true to my heart with, with what I've done here for many years. With Providence and with SageWorks, um, we pride ourselves in customer service. We don't really consider ourselves a, a software vendor, right? When you when you sign up for, for Providence and you sign up for a license, you're actually coming into a technology partnership with us. And so what we do is we actually assign a dedicated consultant to your account. Um, the job of that consultant is to really help you from start to finish, whether that's you know helping you with your, your integrations of the, of the data, whether it's walking you through what your goals are and how you want to implement, how do you want to present to clients, um, as well as you know how do you want to go after a new client, how do you want to cross-sell services, right? They're going to bring success stories from existing customers from years past and help you implement that into your uh, processes. So there'll be some um, defined trainings we're going to go through and then there can be times where you can call in and ask questions, right? If you want to go through uh, success stories or case studies, we're happy to help you in doing all of those areas along the way. And with that, you know, we're kind of coming to the end of our time. So I wanted to uh, first, uh, you know, send up one more poll question and then after that we're going to kind of do uh, two or three questions um, with Adam and ourselves and uh, really uh, you know, I think we had a great and insightful uh, time today. But I'm going to go ahead and launch that uh, poll question um, and you should be able to see it. And this is kind of a you know, general testing of waters again. Uh, out of those uh, advisory services and consulting opportunities, what are you taking advantage of right now? Um, and also, you know, there's that other option down there, and I, I know we didn't give you an option to say we're not doing anything currently, um, but go ahead and just, you know, uh, send uh, in, the, in the chat box uh, just, you know, saying not doing anything right now, or you can give us uh, an example of something that's uh, different that you are doing that might not be listed up there. Um, so I'm going to give you a few more seconds just to go ahead and fill that out. If you can, you can do that, I appreciate that. Um, all right. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and close it out and then uh, present uh, a quick uh, question that came in that I think is really great um, and kind of goes back to those uh, challenges that we had um, looked at earlier. And so I'm going to go ahead and kind of go to the Q&A slide real quick. And the, the question, uh, this one's kind of geared towards Adam. Uh, I'd love to hear what he has to say about it. Um, but when it's talking about the, the challenges as far as implementing those new services, um, this is a, a question for one of the attendees. Um, you know, what is something that C 
CPAs individually can do to kind of come together collectively um, and help leverage one another in solving those, those challenges. Yeah, uh, that is a great question. Um, you know, I'm really involved in uh, Cal CP. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm based in uh, California. Get involved in uh, in your state society. Get involved in AICPA. Um, ensure that that they're doing the things that they need to do. Getting the data, out, the information out to the community that they need to do uh, in order to talk about um, the opportunities that are out there that. Are more than just tax tax uh, uh, compliance and financial statement compliance. Get out there that CPAs are really helping um, communities grow, and without them, uh, there would be a lack of uh, financial analysis. That would be that's really helpful in um, in guiding communities to 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 make greater uh, to build better communities. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Uh, we have another question here, too. Uh, it's a bit of a long one, but I'm going to try and read it off real quick. Um, we have implemented several consulting engagements um, with many of our clients, but are struggling to implement these new services in a timely and efficient manner. Um, would you have any suggestions as to how we can reduce our time on these specialty engagements? Yeah. Um, so what happens is that when you implement new consulting engagements, um, you tend to um, customize them for that specific client. So before you get into that project, you kind of have to look at, okay, can, can I template this project and use it multiple times, or is this just a one-off, one-place thing? So what, what this per, per, particular person is, is probably finding is that they're constantly having to go back to the drawing board and create something new uh, for those clients. Um, so what I'd really challenge you to do is look at those solutions that you've created and talk to your clients about how these solutions can also help them as well. So repeat engagements, get some proficiency into uh, providing the solutions over and over and over, um, and then that's where you'll find that you're really creating value for your clients rather than just driving yourself out of your minds in, uh, in creating a, a ton of new work that uh, you can't bill uh, the, the requisite manner for. Awesome, that's really helpful. We have one more question I think that we can get in uh, with our time here and then we're, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, but that question is, uh, what one change would you make this upcoming tax season or in the next three weeks really to increase the value of uh, your services? Yeah, I, I would just say uh, look at your culture. Um, start, not start, but be positive, be excited, be passionate. Um, work with your with your internal staff and, and your clients to to get people to know this is who you are. This is why you got into this. This is why you're doing what you're doing. And it's most likely not I just prepare tax returns. It's most likely I want to help the community. I want to build a better place for my for my kids to live. I want to uh, build bet bigger and better businesses. I want, I want, I want more uh, of whatever it is uh, that that you and, and your firm is passionate about. Get that out there so that you're not just focused on okay, we do tax returns. Okay, we do financial statements. So, uh, Zach, thanks a lot for uh, for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Adam. And I really wanted to. Uh mentioned to everyone else too that uh, we'll be having Adam on another webinar, um, not this upcoming Tuesday, but the one after that, which I, I think is the 19th, right Adam? Is that right? I believe so, yep. Yep. So uh, it's on the, the 19th and uh, we'll be having him and I'll send out an invitation to you all with the uh, um, the slides from today's uh, webinar as well as the recording from it um, and would love to get that to you and I know Adam has some great insight he's going to be providing some more. and. And that topic's going to kind of be on the ABCs of, of being a trusted advisor. So um, look out for that. And I, I really think, uh, you know, there'll be some more content to kind of build on to this one. Um, but thank you for your time and thank you for all the questions that you had. And um, Chad, Adam, and myself will be reaching out to you about some of the questions that we couldn't get to. Um, and uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you once again.